Hey, welcome to our kids Bible study for Sunday, August 18th, 2024. We've been going over the stories in about Jesus in the Bible in the order in which they happened. And so last time we were talking about the woman in Samaria at the well, and uh, we are starting in the middle of that story, starting at verse 15 this time. Uh, now remember, the, the chart that I have here is that Jesus was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And all this whole area is where Israel would be. So the bottom part is called Judah. And that's where the main religious Jews were. And then the ten northern tribes were in Samaria region, all the way up to Galilee here. And they had their own religion that they followed that was different from what the Jews in Jerusalem followed. But none of them really believed God and His Word. And so here's Jesus. He's going to go from Jerusalem up to Galilee and verse 4 says he must needs go through Samaria. Last time we talked about it, he doesn't really have to. I mean, he can go around over here, you know, and then go, go up here to Galilee. But um, must needs means Jesus was sent to get all of Israel saved, and there's this huge territory that, uh, called Samaria that is rejected by most of Israel because they follow a different religion. But Jesus knows that God loves them just as much as the others, so he's going to go to them. And he finds this woman at a well there in Samaria. And he asks to get a drink. And then he says to her, If you knew who I was, you would ask me to give you living water. Which we've said is the living water is the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is basically God dwelling within us so that we can live by God's word. Before you recognize you've done some bad things and that you trust in Jesus' death to pay for those bad things, then you don't have God dwelling within you. And so you can try, but you can't really serve God. But if you've believed uh, Jesus died for your sins, then Jesus gives you the Holy Ghost. And that's just basically God dwelling in you so that you can follow what God's Word says. And... So he says, well, if you knew, he told the woman of Samaria, if you knew who I was, you'd be asking for a living water, which means Holy Ghost. And she says, oh, well, okay, yeah, I'd like to have some living water. Then I'll, uh, that would be great. So she says in verse 15, and this is where we're starting, John 4 and verse 15, the woman saith unto him, sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. So at first... John 4.15, she calls him Sir. She doesn't know who he is. Just, that's just a term of respect, Sir. And uh, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And that sayest thou truly. <laughs> so basically because Jesus is God. I mean they never met each other before. But Jesus being God knows that she's been married five different times. And now she's living with another man who she hasn't married. And uh, so she's now saying, wow, you know, this is something else. Now it's interesting. All this stuff really happened. And we talked about this in the Old Testament. Whenever there is a story given in the Bible, it literally happened, but God gives this also to us as a picture for us to understand something, something spiritual that's deeper. And so the I have no husband, the spiritual meaning behind I have no husband is spiritually speaking that uh, Samaria does not believe God. Because spiritually speaking, the Israel is supposed to be the wife of Jesus. For us, we are the body of Christ, but for Israel, they're the wife of Jesus. And that's spiritual. And so when she says, I have no husband, that's a sign that Samaria hasn't, doesn't believe God. Doesn't believe the gospel. They're not saved. They're not going to have eternal life with God. 
And when it talks about five husbands, thou hast had five husbands. Well, yeah, literally, that's what she's had. But this represents the five gods that they served. And we can see those in 2 Kings chapter 17. 2 Kings 17, verses 30 and verse 31. Now, that's deeper, more for the adults, so... I just, we're not going to go there and read it, but it's just a, yeah, she literally had five husbands, but the Samaritans didn't believe God. Instead, they served other gods, and there are five of them listed, five gods listed in 2 Kings 17, verses 30 and 31, to match the five husbands that she had. So now, when he says that, I mean, somebody never met before, and all of a sudden he knows that she's living with a man that's not her husband, and she said five previous husbands. So now she says, verse 19, The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. So in verse 15, she called him Sir. And now she says, Oh, well, you are a prophet. And so then she goes right to a religious question. You know, the thing, the most important thing that you can ever learn in life is that you've done some bad things and that God sent his son Jesus and he paid for those sins that you've done. And when you trust that, you get to go to heaven and be with him when you die and live there forever. That's the most important thing you can ever learn. So, Jesus has already tried to lead her into that, talking about this living water. And so, you know, it's like, how do you get that living water? In other words, you've got to believe the gospel. But it seems like she's not really interested in that. Because her response was, verse 20, she gets into religion. Or our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So it's now, instead of Jesus talked about the living water, trying to get her saved to believe the gospel, and now all she's concerned about is, oh, we are a prophet. Well, uh, tell me where to worship. And that's what religion does. It comes up with rules to confuse you, to think, well, if I go to church every Sunday, if I pray the Lord's Prayer, if I make sure I obey the Ten Commandments, the religion comes up with a bunch of rules to say, okay, I'm okay with God if I do this. In this case, it's, you know, well, you say to go to Jerusalem, our fathers worship over here in this mountain in Samaria, you know, where should we go? Uh, and basically, she, he says, verse 21, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You know, that's like if I say, well, recognize that you've done some bad things and Jesus died for your sins. Instead of doing that, you say, well, what church should I go to? Should I go to the Catholic church? Should I go to the Baptist church? Should I go to the Presbyterian? Should I go to the Pentecostal church? Woohoo, so trained for Jesus. You know, what should I do? Um, that doesn't matter. What matters is that you believe that Jesus died for your sins. And then you read the Bible, and the Holy Ghost is given to you when you believe, so the Holy Ghost will help you understand the Bible. You don't need a, a priest or to go to a church to tell you what the Bible says. But that's what religion does. See, religion doesn't want to recognize they're a sinner and that they need God to save them. So they go to some question like, well, where do we worship? You know, do I go to the Catholic church over here? You say to go to the Baptist church. My father say go to the Catholic church. So which one should I go to? And so Jesus basically tells her, that's not what's important. Um, she, he says, verse 23, the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So the truth is God's Word. And then when you believe the gospel, that Jesus died for your sins, then you get the Holy Ghost, or you could say the Spirit of God. So then, if you've got the Spirit of God within you, now you can worship the Father in spirit, and you've got God's Word to teach, the Holy Ghost to teach it to you. So then you can worship in truth. That's what's important. Where to worship? Doesn't matter. What matters is truth. 
and the Holy Ghost or the Spirit of God. That's what's important. That's John 4, 23. So then, uh, again, she goes, okay, now she, again, she doesn't listen to this stuff. She goes to her religion question. Verse 25. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to tell you to get this living water. I'm trying to tell you to believe the gospel. And you're asking where to worship. Then I tell you, well, it doesn't matter where, it's how. You need to worship in spirit and in truth. And now you try to confuse the matters again where he's saying, well, um, I won't listen to you. I'll listen to the Messiah. So he says, okay, well, guess what? I'm the Messiah. So first in John 4, 15, she calls him sir. In verse 19, she calls him a prophet. And now she doesn't call him this, but she understands that he is the Messiah. So her understanding of who Jesus is gets better as it goes on. The problem with all the world's religions is they, when you look at um, atheists, people who don't believe in God, unbelievers, this is what the atheists think of Jesus. He was a man. Then you look at what the religions say, Buddhist, Hinduism, Islam, all these religions, they say Jesus was a prophet. So that's what religions say. But those who recognize that Jesus came and died for their sins, that would be your Bible believers. And they would be the ones recognizing that Jesus is the Messiah. What you call Jesus determines where you go. If you just think he's a prophet, you're not going to get to go to heaven. If you just think he's a man, you don't get to go to heaven. But if you recognize he's the Messiah, which means he's the one sent by God to pay for your sins, you get to go to heaven because you're believing what the Bible says and not what religion says or what the atheists say. And so you can see that here in this chapter. Okay, we're getting close to getting out of time, so let's continue. So when she finds that out in verse 28, she left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. Um, Jesus told her, go call your husband, uh, the man she's living with. She didn't do that. But at least she did go and come to these other men and say, what do you think about this? So then it says in verse 39, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, He told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. And said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. So, she doesn't seem like she's really interested in being saved. Because he offers her living water. And she says, so she says, well, sir, how do I get this? And he says, well, go call your husband. Oh, you know that I had five other husbands? Oh, well, you must be a prophet. Well, tell me where I should worship. And Jesus says, it don't matter where you worship. It matters who you worship. You got to worship God in truth and in spirit. So you need the spirit of God. And that goes back to what I said in the beginning, that I wanted to give you living water. <laughs> okay. So then, you would think, she'd say, oh, that's great. Yeah, I'd love to have the Spirit of God. How do I get that? No. No, she says, well, when Messiah comes, he'll tell us. So he says, guess what? I'm Messiah. I'm here. I'm telling you. But you're not listening. And so then she says, oh, wow. I better go tell everybody else. Yeah, it doesn't seem like she's really interested. But the good news is at least she goes and tells the men of the city, and, and actually many of them believed. So, that's, so it ends up being good, which is why uh, I call the Samaritans are saved. That's the title of this study. And that goes back to John 4 and verse 4, where it says, 
that when Jesus left Judea and departed again into Galilee, he must needs go through Samaria. And like I said, a lot of Jews, because they thought of this as a different religion uh, there in Samaria, uh, the good Jews down here in Jerusalem, they wouldn't go right through up here to Galilee. They'd go around. Hard for me to see on this screen. I'll look at it myself. They'd go around over here to the side, and they'd go up to Galilee. It's more miles, but at least that way they didn't have to go through this region because those people worshipped other gods and worshipped, had a different religion. But Jesus says, I must needs go through Samaria. I've got to go through Samaria to get to Galilee. Not to save some time or mileage, but there are people there who will believe me. And I've come to save all the people. Not just the people in Jerusalem, but also those Jews that are in Samaria. And so we see now what he really means in John 4.4 4, when it says he must needs go through Samaria. As we go through the book of John, we're going to see that John will add little comments along to what Jesus says to sort of help us out to understand what's going on. So here, he added the comment, he must needs go through Samaria. And now that we read it, we found out why. Why? Because many Samaritans believe and are saved. And what's sad is that in Jesus' own hometown, in Galilee and Nazareth, they wouldn't believe. In Jerusalem, they wouldn't believe. They've cast John the Baptist into prison. And so what's weird about it is that the Jerusalem saints, that, or the people in Jerusalem say, well, we know better than the Samaritans. We've got God with us because we worship in Jerusalem. And the Samaritans worship up here somewhere. So we are closer to God. God is our, our God. And the Samaritans, that God's not their God. But in reality, the Samaritans believed the gospel that Jesus gave and those in Jerusalem didn't. And the people in his own hometown, Nazareth, tried to kill Jesus. So it shows really God, God wants everybody to be saved. And Jesus says, I know those people in Jerusalem don't really like the Samaritans, but you know what? God loves them. He wants everybody to be saved. So I'm going to go there and, and talk to them. And as a result, there are some people saved. Okay, so we're out of time, and so next time we'll, uh, we'll probably next, well, we got the healing of the nobleman's son next, and then we'll go back to Matthew, because in order of what happened, Matthew uh, chapter 4 would be next after this. So let's close in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your own son to die on the cross for our sins. Pray, Lord, that you will help us believe that, and that we will read God's word and let God, the Holy Ghost, teach it to us so that we can do what you'd want us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.